It's a new and increasing face of citizens, white and middle class. The black, the poor, still outnumber him by a vast majority. But they all share one experience, prison, and expect to share another. They expect to come back. This is for animals. The dogs, our guard dogs live in cages, in dog houses, dog cages, fences, walls around them. We are people. We have hearts, we have souls. We eat, we talk, we have feelings. And this is my answer. This whole prison system is wrong. myself that nothing very important was going to happen. It's going to be the same day as it was yesterday. Sometimes you're first out the challenge, sometimes you're last out. Anyway, when you get there, you know it's going to be the same old food. And you're going to pick it up without looking at really what it is and somehow recognizing it anyway. for the food to be brought around to us. When you hear that food coming, you're waiting and you haven't done anything to work up an appetite because you're locked in, you're gonna be locked in all day and they're gonna shove it through the door at you and make you feel less human than you are. And make you wanna shove it right back out there without touching it. But you're hungry, so you know you're gonna have to eat so you just wait. Shove it through the ad. You, you look at him, and that's all you can do is just look at him and take it. Two million Americans enter our prisons every year. Almost half of them will go back. Listen, brothers. This has got a lot to do with it. And my sister. It also does concern you. Oh 
see those of us we imprison. We seldom want to. But in the full, harsh light of the life we send them to. And for that freedom, we acknowledge the cooperation of the Bucks County Correctional System and of the men who decided not to stay a shadow. Not to be stripped of one of the last things we lament. follows is a record of a typical day in prison. Few of those days are atypical. One is all too much like the others. It was built in 1884 under the auspices of the Bucks County Board of Charities, constructed on the theory of separate and solitary confinement. One man locked up alone until he either repented of his sins or died. In a cell where once one man meditated, there are now four. In that respect, this prison is no different than most. In almost every other, it is. My name is Prentice Williams. I've been a prisoner half of the 34 years that I've been alive. I've been arrested for almost everything from using drugs to armed robbery. Now I'm walking into another prison where people are holding the doors open. That's what makes it different from all the other prisons. But what makes it similar is that the walls are the same, the bars are the same. Major John D. Case, 21 years in the Marine Corps, retired, warden of Bucks County Prison. I never had a desire to know or to meet a warden. Good morning, Pat. May I have some coffee, please? Big John Case is different. He's a man first and a warden second. Good morning. Thank you. Pat, could you get Mr. Savasco to come in and see me, please? Yes, lady. I'd love to see if he's available. Thank you. Making a home out of a cage For me, it was three walls to one man. Here, it's four men to three walls. 
pictures, books, remnants of what was and may be again. How much junk just piles up in so short a time? You throw things out, you get new things. But the things that remind you most of what used to be, you manage to keep. You know, jails don't help people. Jails take a guy and make him, uh, you know, worse than what he is. You send a guy to jail, like me, I went to jail, I never heard of dope. You know, I never knew what dope was. I never knew what robbing a bank was or, or shooting somebody with a gun. When I come out of here, I decide, man, hey, this is something, you know. I ain't know about this, but I don't learn this in jail. Is jail rehabilitating me by doing that? I mean, you taking me away from the guns and the, and the murderers and, and uh, rapists and stuff? You're not taking me away from you. are putting me in and learn, teaching me how to live with them and possibly use, use their tactics to get along. I would say the people now outside, they have, to, uh, you know, they have to accept that we are citizens. We're not just people who are supposed to be criminals or monkeys locked up in a cage. That these people are people just like they are. I know I'm a citizen. I was born in this state. I know these guys there feel the same way. Uh, every man is born with certain rights, but these rights are fulfilled once you come here. It's a dull experience. I came in this thing like, I thought I was coming into something to, uh, well anyway, it's like this. I came in here, it's not. It's like the outside world to me. There's still prejudice, there's still racism, there's some everything right here in this jail. Like this outside world thing, which I thought I was getting out of, I came right into it, you know. How do you feel about the programs? Programs they got here. Uh, I could work 12 hours a day. I still got to sleep now. I got to go to bed. <coughs> I got to be in the bed by myself, first of all. So therefore, you know, I'm not sleeping. I'm what do you mean tired. by yourself? Are you talking about a sexual urge that you have that you just can't ignore? That's why you can't ignore. I mean, <laughs> well, if you, you, if you can that. ignore it, maybe you belong here. If you can ignore it, maybe you belong here. Well, let's put it like this here then. Uh, a, young, a lady gets her kid locked up, but young, young kids get locked up, and you know, mothers want to know, why is my little son getting raped in jail? You know? Like, you bring a nice, sweet little boy in jail, they call him, you know, sweet boy. The little yeah. cute kid comes in jail, and he's got a lot of, you know, he's, he's feminine in a lot of ways. I know a guy been locked up in jail, man, 8, 10, 12 months, and some guys 6, 7 years. A sweet little boy like that come in there, Jack, and, and you thump him in his chest one time, and just holler at him, and he ready to pull out on his pants. I mean, this is a thing the society has got to face. I mean, the breeding ground for homosexuality, man, is jail. I don't care what nobody is, this is it. Yeah. And well, you see that wall out there is put up there for two reasons. <laughs> it's to keep you in. Keep them out. Keep them out. Keep them out. And that is it. That is it. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Simple things like that people don't even notice, man. You know. Right, the smartest people are in jail. You got psychiatrists in jail, you got doctors in jail, you got scientists, you got lawyers, you got state troopers, and these are the guys here. I worked in Remus, man, I had to quit my job. You know why I had to quit my job? Because they had a sign, that little piece of paper there that says, uh, do you have a police record? Now if I tell them I got a police record, I can't get my job. Then you tell somebody you got a police record, the first thing that guy look at you like you a dog, but he out there robbing people every day. Like my biggest, my biggest hassle on the streets is drugs. Like, uh, I mean, that's, that's my charge, uh, and that's really it's all my other charges, uh, you know, stealing and this and that and the other thing. Like, money's got to come from someplace. I think jails in the olden days were put together to depress a mind, to, to hold a captive or some or your enemy, more or less, put it this way. But I think corrections are a beautiful thing and people use this way. I mean, you have to understand that we are people and to go through corrections, you have to treat people with respect, first of all. Like if this guy doesn't give me respect, he can't correct me because I'm not gonna respect him, first of all. If he give me respect, he can correct me, correct my problem, and we can do it together. But as long as we got a, you know, a line between us, there can't be no corrections, man. As long as we got that disrespect for each other, there can't be no corrections. Uh, from 1682 until 1790, uh, people were not put in jail to do time as a sentence or punishment. They were only held in jail until the judge made a, some disposition of their case. And uh, men, women, and children, everybody was thrown in uh, uh, some kind of a human cesspool together. Uh, 
and uh, the punishments were, you know, the stocks and the pillory and um, incapacitation, or you got your head cut off, uh, uh, you were burned at the stake. Uh, in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, because of the Quaker influence, the uh, influence of a people who are basically, you know, very concerned, very kindly people. Uh, in 1790, in the Walnut Street Jail in Philadelphia, they started the idea of doing time. Uh, it was a great and noble experiment at that time, uh, a great step forward. Now, uh, you know, almost 200 years later, uh, we have proven one thing, it doesn't work. Bucks County Juvenile Home. When I was 14, I was locked away in a juvenile home. When I was 14, a minute meant more to me then than a day does now. When I was 14, I thought that I'd be old when I got to be 16. I guess maybe I was. The Bucks County Rehabilitation Center. No bars, no locks, only the ones you build within yourself. Here you serve time in the community, contributing to it, not taken from it. John Case, among all too few others, thinks this should come first. Prison should be a last resort. Running an open institution is uh, uh, the most difficult uh, kind of a place to run. It's uh, difficult for me and the people who run it. It's also the most difficult place to do your time. Because, uh, you know, when you're locked up with wall and, and bars, uh, uh, pretty much all of the decision-making process is removed. Uh, we make your decisions for you. Uh, but in an open institution, a man has to make a decision every day that he's going to stay there, he's not going to run away, because there are no bars and there's no fence and there's no wall. So the only wall is, is the wall that a man builds inside himself, uh, the wall, wall of self-control. The Major said to me, Alex, I put trust in you. That door opens and closes 24 hours a day, and I'm out there but I don't run. Why? Because that man put trust in me. And he knows even if I walk out there, I'll come back. So he put trust in me and I trust him for this. I trust his judgment. So this is what I'm saying. Open them doors. Let everybody out. Put trust in every person in here and he will return voluntarily. Uh, in the Marine Corps, uh, I thought nothing of putting a man in solitary or in the hole, as the prisoners call it, for 30 days on bread and water. Uh, these were the things we knew. Many young men would get into the brig for a short sentence of just a few days for being AWOL, and by the time they got through with that short sentence, they were so bitter and so filled with hatred of the system that they actively tried to get bad conduct discharges. I was assigned to run the brig at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina uh, in 1960, uh, and I was sent uh, to Howard Gill School at American University in Correctional Administration. Uh, I became Gillianized. My attitude was changed as a result. Uh, I decided, uh, as a result of this course, that uh, the only thing that we had managed to do under the old system was to take bitter men and make them worse. Solitary confinement. A prison within a prison. I didn't think about any good things. 
that I knew about while I was in solitary. Because they would make me feel better. And in solitary, I felt bad. You had to be bad to go there, so that's how I thought. I thought bad. Well, I don't know too much about society. I never paid any attention to people, you know? I do what I want. I mean, that's the way I was, uh, you know, in different places, you know, different homes and stuff. I just do what I want. I don't care about society. It's just all mixed up. I ain't got nothing out of this world but a big foot. <clears throat> As far as I'm concerned, them people out there can go to hell. See, it's no, it's no good. Like me, I'm 30 years old. When I was 13 or 14, like, I couldn't get education, you know what I mean? He come 20 years later telling me, trying to make me go to school. You know what the hell I'm going to do with that education, you know what I mean? I can't use the one I got. I came to teach an illiterate man, and uh, I have... From that day till this, I have a waiting list of illiterates to teach how to read and write. And I've never known anything as exciting as uh, uh, have a man write his name for the first time. Uh, that, that's a thrill I'd never experienced. When I was 13 and 14 and needed education, I couldn't get it. But now, you know, I didn't struggle all my life just this far. I can make it the rest of the way. You know what I mean? We put men in there. They're, they're in pain. They're socially ill, they're a danger to the community, and we let them sit in some kind of a human warehouse in cold storage and do nothing except count them and feed them and treat them in a way, in most places, many places at least, that if we treated dogs this way, the SPCA would be swearing out warrants all over the place. So we have to learn to at least treat our prisoners as well as we treat the animals in the zoo. Three times a day, you're locked up and you're counted. So what it comes down to is this. You're reduced to a click on a counter. Not even a big number like the one they give you with your mug shot. Just a click. I went outside to the front, front gates and swept the streets, the sidewalks, and I see people pull up in their cars with their kids and get out and say, look at that, look at that wall. But this is all they see is the wall. They don't see the inside of this prison. They come up on Saturdays and Sundays, you know, the Sunday drivers. They stop with their kids and tell their kids, well, this is where the criminals are. This is where the animals are. Now, who is an animal in here? I am not an animal. I am a human being. Hey, they laugh at you when you're rolling around in your cell sick, man. They walk by and look at you and laugh at you. You're rolling around yourself, crawling around, man, rolling around. You can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't do nothing. And then the doctor comes up to you and looks in and laughs at you. The place for treatment of the social misfits of our society is in the community. The community instead uh, finds it very convenient to put them behind a wall and think that there's some magic about the bricks and the stone and the steel that will affect change. And the community that feels this is correct. It will affect change. It will make a man change. He'll become much worse. I'm from Levittown. I lived there about 18 years. Nothing's happening. Not damn Nothing happening but ugly cops. What's happening with drugs in Levittown? There's a lot happening with dope in Levittown. It's getting worse all the time. Younger kids shooting it all the time. Girls that I knew a year ago didn't do anything, and now I see them shooting skag all the time. Is that why you're here? Uh, well, I have, a, I have a drug charge, but I'm not here on it now. That, that bail's posted. Can you think of any way things could be handled differently? other than the way they handle here. If you were in a hospital, you might be able to get some help. I'm trying to get in a hospital right now. I've been three weeks already. I can't. I'm having a hard time. You know? I'm supposed to be admitted in Eaglesville on the 28th. 
counselor called my mom yesterday and said that he doesn't think she should get me out because he don't think I want help. Do you think that drug use should be a criminal charge? No. You think you would use drugs? If drugs were legal, you'd be dead. Would I abuse them? Yeah, if it was legal. Can't help but abuse them. Can't use them and not abuse them. Contraband, the forbidden. It's whatever they say you can't have, but saying you can't have it is not the same as saying you can't get it or make it. Another John Case innovation, a weekly meeting of prison officers, inmates, and concerned citizens. The subject, contraband. As you know, about the stamps anyway, a guy's using them to put acid in one of them. Someone asked me about paint sets, and I paint by numbers. I can't sense, and as much as these are, I don't know, they're watercolors or oil. Or, Right, what are colors, W? No, they're oh, oil paint. Oh, or oil. It was one problem with turpentine. Yeah, I think turpentine or paint thinner or something like that. But, but when you buy one of these kits, doesn't a little uh, container this uh, stuff paint thinner with it? Right, but if you buy acrylic paints, you don't need those. Yeah. You can use those straight from the tube. Also, tempera paints are gouache paints. Uh, I, don't, books. I, don't think there should, I don't think there should be any censorship at all in books. Well, there are some types of... Yeah, everybody here is an adult. We don't need any more brainwashing than what we're getting. Uh, and, I believe uh, uh, pornographic literature should not be brought into the Well, who determines what pornographic? It's not Supreme Court? It's not pornographic. Yeah, something like Playboy now. Or oh, yeah, no. There's no argument. Something art like that. that. That would be... There's no argument. Right. Watch that. The thing is, uh, I myself, I'm married and i got two kids. And, uh, it's punishment enough just being away from them. I mean, uh, let alone what you have to go through when, I, in, well, say in a state institution. Uh, they punish you themselves, uh, I mean, on top of it all. They make it harder for you, more difficult uh, as far as the guards go and everything else. And, uh, I mean, right now, I mean, the day I was busted was the day, you know, that uh, I was reformed right then and there. And uh, re as far as uh, rehabilitation goes, uh, the state, it, it's ridiculous. It's a farce. Uh, they're putting on a big show for these, uh, for society. And uh, it's, it's just uh, a big put on as far as I'm concerned. The state, hasn't, the state doesn't do anything for you, in this state anyway, as far as I know. And uh, I've been down for 17 months now, and I haven't seen any rehabilitation whatsoever. I've been here for a month. And uh, this has helped me the most, this place here. And about, this is the, about the only place that's going to do it, as far as I know. But uh, the punishment thing, I mean... Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, our rate of success uh, is so poor throughout the United States that if, uh, you know, some major company like General Motors had the same... Uh, poor rate of success or high failure rate of its product, uh, the stock uh, holders would have a new board of directors every year. Uh, the taxpayers, I think, have a right to expect us to do better if they're willing to pay for it. Good treatment costs money. Uh, the old system we've proven didn't work. What we have to realize is that when that door of my jail or anybody else's jail clangs behind a man, that's when he's psychologically open and bleeding. Do you have any personal property in here at all? No. I didn't see anybody in here. You didn't. <laughs> cigarettes and all yours.
gives the right to a judge to take our life away? Wait, to take our three years, ten years, fifty years of our life. We have feelings, we have wives, children, mothers and fathers. You know, we're all waiting to get him home. He has little sisters and a small brother, six years old. He asks about him faithfully every day. <laughs> it's strange. Uh, uh, something you, you imagine you could never get to. and. Uh, when you get in there, you, you got to adjust to a whole different life. Uh, and uh, you have people telling you what to do. And you meet up with some tougher people than what you thought you were. And uh, it's, it's just hard to get used to. But once you're there, you start getting used to it. But uh, it's a thing that you don't want to get used to real real good because you you might just keep coming back and coming back but you have to learn something while you're there we just feel that if he can try to help himself and come back you know try to get himself straightened out you can readjust we know that he can do it and he has a lot of help and we all want him home so You wait to come out of this cell. You wait to get out of the block. Sometimes nobody sees you waiting. Sometimes nobody knows you're waiting. Sometimes nobody cares if you're waiting. They even wait to lock you in. When I was over in New Jersey, I was confined for 30 days in a cell, half the size of this, one sandwich a day, man. You know, like I was 14 at the time when this happened. And this is supposed to be helping a person by putting them in there like this. I don't think so. Where does the crime start? Of course they don't. It's my fault, too. But believe me, people, they have just as much to do with it as I do. You know, I just don't want to do it myself. I got one word for it. Hell. The first, first night I ever came in here and they locked that door, that just, that just killed my whole spirits. We're old enough to be locked up, we're old enough not to be children. But when I ran away, believe me, I had it tough. I wanted to go back home. I wanted to go back home even after my stepfather had beaten me half to death. I wanted to go back home. Do you want your kids to be in here? When they're this age, well, if you don't, you better get home. Right on. Right. They don't want me home because, you know, they think that I'm going to corrupt my brothers and sisters. I can't see my brothers and sisters because I'm so corrupt, you know. There's no way you can make it. Even adults have a hard enough time surviving in this world. It's hard times for everybody. It's just hard to survive at an older age. Now, how do you expect to survive at the age of 13? A prison kitchen is a connection spot, sometimes for contraband, and for those who don't work there, sometimes it's for better food. I worked in the kitchen one time, right after being in solitary confinement. And I worked on an officer's range. I cook food for the officials. And I know just who wanted milk in their coffee and who took their coffee straight. And who would want extra. work to go around, so they make work. But it's not the kind of work you use once you get on the street.
Uh, the majority of prisons I've been in, man, it's just like to detain them, you know what I mean? They just throw you in a cage and just lock the door, you know, it's up to you whether you're going to do something yourself. The majority of people in there, they just get bitter, more and bitter with the society that did it, and they come back out in their anger and they take the frustrations back on society again. And like, this is the, really the first uh, prison I've been in, it's really took an interest in people. Like I say, I was here before, but I never realized the opportunities I had. Like, this is my second time here, you know, and uh, I realize the opportunities they offer here now. This is the 12th group session that we have had on this program. And in between the 12 groups, we've had, you've had, individual counseling on a one-to-one -one basis, 12 separate occasions. So this is the... At the rehab center, a so-called macro session conducted by a citizen volunteer, an experimental program called Imaginal Education. They use pictures, music, and words, anything that can help a man improve his image of himself. What we're trying to do, we're working as a group, and we're trying to participate. So don't hold back your gripes. If you got them, let us know. We want to hear about them. Well, I think uh, the way the program was ran was pretty good, but there's a few things that the, the pictures themselves that we've seen. I think the uh, fellas that was in here really couldn't get anything out of those pictures because they never had time out in the street to look at those pictures. So I would took the pictures out of them. You're talking about like Picasso's granite? Yeah, that there I would definitely would have took out. You remember that was sort of a weird thing when we first looked at it. Everybody sort of got, you know, they didn't know what was out there. But after we started to tear that thing down and a little bit, take something out and put it back in, I think we sort of, the group sort of got into the mood of what, what, what the feeling of that picture was. I think there was no happiness in that group on that picture. And we got, we got a number of good answers. Most of the answers we would got we fell back on uh, revolutionary ideas and misery and people being, you know, right. dying and this, stuff. This is the and thing we, what we're talking about. You said it right there, misery out there. True. Well, who, here, who in here hasn't, you know, encountered misery out there? That's what most of us are a in lot, here. A lot of people. Is there anybody here that hasn't encountered misery out in the street? What kind of misery are you talking about? What kind of else misery is there? There's mm -hmm. plenty of kinds, man. Weren't you ever miserable? At the rehabilitation center, those who can work. They work in the community paying board and room, court costs, and in many cases, supporting families which otherwise would require public assistance. A highly experimental program, it has its failures. Men do leave, and simply walking away from the center can be judged with the same severity as going over the wall at the prison. Some are federal and state prisoners. Others are county inmates about whom John Case has a feeling of trust. After work, they must report back here. There are no bars, no locks, but they are still convicts with all the stigmas of guilt and shame we give to them. Why did these men, for this film, decide on their own not to remain invisible? We put a lot of faith in this, all of us right here. We've talked about it, we've rapped about this for hours. We're, we're up to it. We were up to it because we knew this was our one chance to do what we wanted to see done. And we had to do it. We either made it or break it. I got six years down. I'm not proud of it. But those people, right out there, right out there, if somebody would have gave me a break, I would have made it. If those yo-yos out there can't listen to us, who the hell can they listen to? I'm not proud of what I am. I don't blame them for making me that way because I turned bitter against them. But if they gave somebody a chance once in a while, regardless of their race, regardless of their creed, regardless of whatever, the world would be a hell of a lot better place. And not leave it up to the next man to do. That's right. There is no place in society for prisons. This is back in the dark ages when you <laughs> separated the criminals from society because you didn't know how else to control you couldn't make them want to change. You tell me this. Prisons have been in existence for thousands of years. And they're still doing a the job? The hell they are. They're turning out more convicts <coughs> and more potentially dangerous people. Not because when they came in, some guys come in as meek as a pussycat. But they go out and like, they're ready to set the world on fire. And I'm not talking about good. I'm talking about bad. Who needs it, man? My kids don't need it. His don't. His don't. His don't. I mean, dig it. Those people can't realize it, man. 
they think all oh, the poor misfortunates. Right now, this group we got in here is far from being misfortunate because we know what it's like. We know what it's like. Man, we don't need that. We don't need the sympathy. We don't need that at all. What we need is some help. What we need is jobs established. What we need is training. What we need is psychiatric care. What we need for these kids is places like foster homes where they can get the love, where they can get the attention, where they can get all the need they need. Right there, he hit it. He hit the heart of it. People have got to take time to think about other people instead of stopping and thinking only of themselves. Nobody has to be an island here. We're all in the same boat. You said them out there. That's right, because we're brothers and they're just people. We're brothers, we're sisters. Right the kids on. down there, the boys down there, the girls down there, the girls in jail. There are brothers and there are sisters. Maybe we don't dig it, maybe we don't like it, but let's face it, man, we're all in the same boat. Now out there, there ain't no resemblance of any kind of kinship. <laughs> but there has to be prisons. You're wrong. There's They're wrong. You're dead prison. wrong. Yes, no, no. You're wrong. No. No. Right. No, you're it's wrong. There does <laughs> not have to be prisons. Let me tell you something. The same crime I'm in here for now, I committed before. They put me in a prison behind a wall. They had guns in the towers. And they kept me locked up. I did say Now, this crime necessary. I committed now, the same crime, they sent me out on a bus with car fare. I went to work and I came back the same day and every day since I've been in here. I've been working, supporting my family, paying taxes, and haven't cost the state a nickel. The same crime as they put me behind the wall for with the guns. Now, am I dangerous? There's a 15 or 16 year old personal experience. There's a 15 or 16 year old need to see some kids trying to escape, get shot and left on wires, hanging. 15 or 16 year old children it, should not be in prison. Right on. Well, what do you think this is about? what we're talking about <laughs> right here, oh, right now. Like this. But I'm talking about my kids. I got a three year old and a seven month old. In not 10 out. years, man, I don't want them to have to go through what I did because I was 15 years old when I saw them kids banging on the wires, man. And I wasn't a goddamn criminal then. Then, I am now. The holding cage. From the juvenile home to the prison to the rehabilitation center, they are all held, imprisoned by steel or self-discipline. Is there an evolutionary road from one to the next to the next? In an effort to find out, we joined the three institutions by telephone and filmed the following dialogue. Only the juveniles will not be seen. I have a question for someone down detention center who would like to answer. Um, no matter what the motive was that put you in a detention center, whether it was behind drugs or um, a criminal act or a juvenile act, do you have um, the feeling that when you get back out in the street that you um, intend to stay out of jail? You can't have Yeah. Them. Yeah. No. Very strongly. No. No. <laughs> yes. Yes. Will I be back? Yeah, I'll be back. I've been back 14 times already. And I ain't proud. That's right. If you don't know, if you don't know how to sneak, lie, cheat, and do the things like this before you come into prison, or um, <laughs> jail, or a detention home, or anything like this, believe me, you learn it, and you learn it well. Ain't that nice? You catch so many little little ideas and little things that by the time you come out of here, you're a better burglar than when you came in here. Or you're a better a better a better stick up man or a a better a better driver for a getaway car. You're a better everything. I'm here for running away. And my parents think I'm crazy, so keeping me here and I never, never want to be locked up again. I'm only fourteen. I started when I was twelve. I started out all messed up and I like they like, I got in so much trouble, they, the only thing they got, I'm up here for is incorrigibility. That's what, my parents can't handle me. When I sat down there ten years ago, I didn't want to come back either. But, uh, dig it. <laughs> I'm sitting here rapping to you right now. I've started off, um, down to detention center about 14 years ago. I mean, when I was 14 and I'm 24 now, and I'm still in jail. And I have 
served over 25 years, not by going in and going out. 25 straight years, 365 days a year. I've come from Alcatraz Island to here. It's no fun being in jail, in prison, in penitentiary. It's no fun. You get institutionalized. You either make it or either you break it. Like, I'm too bad for the other kids in school. He did this wrong and he did that wrong, and he was put away. He's a bad guy. That's why people do commit crimes after they've served time. That's why they're back again. We've got to show those people on the, on the outside society that we're not animals, that we are people. That's, what, that's the way you're treated, though, isn't it? If a man's a rapist, or if he's a sadist, or if he's a killer, he belongs in an institution, a mental institution. But he don't belong behind a wall. A wall is to keep people out, not keep people in. A wall is to keep the reporters out. That's why the mail is censored. That is what a wall is for. People don't understand that. They can never understand it. A prison consists of maybe five or six hundred rooms. They're bathrooms. That's all they are. They're not bathrooms. They're cages. You walk in the front door and right away you see a holding cell, which, does, which isn't a holding cell. This is a holding cage. Now how can we be human beings in a holding cage? This is for animals. The dogs, our guard dogs live in cages, in dog houses. Dog cages, fences, walls around them. Riots. You read about riots. If a guard's held hostage, it's a riot. But there's riots every month in prison. They lock the doors and let you kill each other. And that's the end of the riot. But people don't know. Because the wall is there. You have to knock down the walls. Prison can support itself. These men can run hospitals. They can run institutions. They can support themselves. Bucks County, a farm town, posed to be hicks. But they come up with a thing that works. All you ministers, clergy, priests, American Legion, there's veterans in here. You got congregations, come visit. You can come to the Bucks County Rehabilitation Center. You can come up here and look. I dare you to go visit somewhere else. But if you go, they'll be eating roast beef, mashed potatoes, pie, coffee. We appreciate you coming to these places because we get a meal once in a while. But you don't know what's going on. I was in prison and I got out. The man next to me got out. He's back for murder. The man next to me on the other side is back for murder. The man across from me is back for murder. And I just did time with a guy for 30 days in the last two months and he's back for murder. Now you tell me. Where is the rehabilitation? Nowhere. Nothing is going on. They're not teaching you. They're not helping you. They can help you maybe in the prison. But when you get out, society's got to help you. The people have got to help you. And if they don't, you never make it. It's crazy. It's really crazy. If I got a beef, man, I take it to the inmates, not discuss with, my, with the inmates that are older than me because they have been in jail longer, because I can get more out of them than I can these people because they've never been locked up. So don't go talking about rehabilitation until you get some. When you get rehabilitation, then you come see me. Maybe we have the uh, wrong concept of the whole thing. Maybe uh, when we do get out of here, maybe we are going into a new bag, what we call society, which isn't what's happening in the first place. Maybe we're stepping into who the real criminals are, who the real animals are. Society is right here, right here. Us inmates are society. Right. The people don't want to hear us. You talk to somebody, they're too hung up, you know, they don't want to hear it. They don't have the time. But let me tell you, Trenton State Prison's got more rehabilitation than Bucks County ever have. So as you go down that prison, the guards don't bother you. If you got a problem, man, them guards will come to you and they'll take you aside and they'll help you. They might beat your brain that you do something wrong or stomp you and kick you and throw you in a hole and kill you. Yeah, but yeah, you're, rather, you're better off dead than to go out in society from coming out of Bucks County Jail or any other jail that calls itself having this here uh, rehabilitation thing because they ain't got it. You got the kids that come in here, they put them back in that little room back there. You got women that come in here. They separate. As a guy comes in here, man, he's going to wind up being a homosexual because you can't even look at a girl. You catch you looking at a girl, they want to throw you in red lock. They think you're crazy or something. If a guy wants to go down to Savasco or one of these guys in there and say, well, look, this is a problem. I got a real problem. If they can't understand this problem, man, they got him going to see this nut doctor. And this nut doctor, he ain't got as much sense as you got. And this I know for a fact. Now, he told them, first he says, well, this guy's got a problem. And I went back down to see this doctor again. He said, oh, there's nothing wrong with this guy. But don't tell me there's nothing wrong with me. Something's got to be wrong that I'm taking away from somebody. I go out there, they can't do something. I don't rattle him. I'm wrong. I'm violating some kind of constitution they got out there. 
Hey, I know for a fact that there are cops and judges and people out there committing crimes. I know that they're doing stuff. I know we got cops to bring people in here at nighttime. They beat them. They bring them in here with their busted faces and stuff. And they're not supposed to let an inmate come in an institution when he's hurt. But I've seen it done here. I've been up at nighttime and seen, seen you know, a lot of stuff that goes on here that they say don't happen in Bucks County Jail. The reason why it don't happen is because they don't see it. And you got people working on this side. The major's over there. The warden, he's over there. He's got a pretty nice system here. But the people on this side, they hate that warden's guts. They're trying to get rid of him because that warden, he's trying to, to open up these doors. He can't open these doors. The people he got working for him are illiterate and stupid. You try to talk to somebody in here, you say, look, I got a problem. Ah, oh, see me later. I'm busy. Getting some bad vibes, man. Uh, you people are, you're like, you're not taking in everything, man. Some of the people been in places all over the, all over the United States, but it just seems that uh, we're dealing right here specifically with Bucks County, the major, the major, the major. Hey, look, like I said before, this is the best of the worst. Right, but he's only the major. <laughs> you got to make him the general. You got to knock these people down and knock them walls down. We have to have freedom. What freedom do we have in here? We are robots. In the morning, the bell rings, you wake up. March down to there, you eat this. If you say something, they uh, put you in a hole. You have no freedom in here. No freedom of speech. No, f I mean, you know, mental or physical. They tell you you can decide mentally. You can't decide a damn thing in here. Like, all you do out there, man, is look at that name. Institution. Correction. That don't mean nothing, man, with no backing. And you out there looking at them, calling them criminals, vicious, you know. Uh, are you human? Are you animals? I mean, uh, who are the real criminals? Who are the real animals? Think about it, you know. If I'm going to support you, why don't you support me? I don't think so that society owes me anything. I think I owe myself something. And uh, society never put me in jail. And uh, as a matter of fact, society helped me get out of jail a few times. And uh, I just feel that uh, you have to make it yourself. Like, society is like everybody out there and uh, I consider myself like an individual I have to do it myself I can't go and uh, lean on other people because they're not going to hold my hand and uh, when I feel like committing a crime and then when I do commit that crime I come to jail and uh, nobody out there told me to do it but myself society owes me four years of time and I'm starting some more time and they're gonna owe me that too like all I want to do is tell society that they better get it together. They better get places like this spread all over the world. The way the drug scene's going now, there's going to be all kinds of people in jail. You won't have enough jails to put them in. I want them to know that they can help. How? How? By coming in here and doing something. Anything. Talking to us or something like that. Is that important? Yeah, that's important. Why? What's important? Why? It makes you feel like you're somebody. It makes you feel like somebody cares anyway. Like we ain't a bunch of animals or pigs or something. You need identity. You need identity in life is what you need. That's right. Who are you? Well, I'm, I'm a human being, man. I'm just like they are. I'm just like they are. We are people. We have hearts. We have souls. We eat. We talk. We have feelings. And this is my answer. This whole prison system is wrong. We might not be able to help ourselves, but maybe we'll help people coming along behind us. Will I be back? Yeah, I'll be back. At the end of a long day, John Case, son and daughter. Uh, I would be very, uh, very bothered if uh, everybody who's locked up in this jail were happy with it. I think that's the last thing we want. But, you know, we've taken away the one thing that is, you know, indispensable to human being. We've taken away freedom. What we're trying to do here is not really re rehabilitate people. Rehabilitation, you know, is a word that means uh, to go back to a condition that previously existed. Uh, I don't want most of these men to go back to a condition that previously existed. The condition that previously existed for them was intolerable. I want to set up an atmosphere of challenging uncomfortableness in this institution. I don't want people to be too comfortable. I want them to feel challenged uh, by what we're doing. 
Uh, I want to be challenged by what, by what they say, by what they do. What would you do if you were put in that jail with major cases of the warden? If I were put in that jail with major cases of the warden, I probably would be the most difficult prisoner that major case ever had anything to do with. I, I'd be very angry. I'd, you know, if I could, I'd tear the bars off the wall. Well, I'd probably go over the wall is what I'd probably do. I don't think I could, I really don't think I could put up with it. Uh, even for all the good things that, that they do for all the men in, and the women in here, they're still living under conditions that uh, they're just really unfair to make human beings live in. I feel very strongly that we have enough maximum security institutions in this country to last us for the next 200 years. I would like to see more minimum institutions, such as the rehab center. I'd like to see uh, a lot of uh, halfway houses with, you know, maybe 12 men uh, with professional uh, treatment and so on. Uh, but I really don't think we've come to the point where we can replace the wall. Because, you know, society has the right to be protected. And we do have men in prison who are very dangerous. Now, if the day comes when I or anybody else can say to society, this very dangerous person is now uh, rehabilitated or whatever, and uh, you can put him on the street and not worry, fine, then tear down all the bars and all the walls. The average citizen has no idea of the tremendous expense of locking a man up anywhere, whether it's here or in California or New York. Uh, it costs as much in the average prison uh, as it does to send a boy to Harvard. The average citizen out in the street doesn't realize that what we really need is one citizen for every inmate. One caring, concerned person. Uh, you know, there's a little poem by Edward Markham that I like to quote, outwitted. He drew a circle that shut me out. Heretic, rebel, a thing to flout. But I and love had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. And that's what we're really doing. We're in the business of drawing circles to take the rejects of our society and put them back in our circle. You try. And uh, uh, you fail more often than you succeed. And in my business, the frustrating thing is you always see your failures because they come back in the gate to haunt you. I don't care if you have to affect this change but on the basis that it's too expensive to continue doing what we've been doing. Uh, we do it on the basis that we're compassionate people, that, uh, you know, we're a civilized nation, uh, that we don't really need to get, you know, a uh, ounce of flesh and a, or an ounce of blood and a pound of flesh. Some people, I think, will be involved in this. Uh, or support the kind of thing we're trying to do because it's just a very practical and realistic thing that we're doing. Uh, that this is the way you really protect society. Uh, other people are going to do it on a basis of compassion. Sometimes I wanted to cry. Sometimes I wanted to scream it. Sometimes I simply wanted to ask it. Is there anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? Is there anybody out there?